to perform exploit data analysis on a time series data for that i have taken data from yahoo finance we have taken data five years of uh, stock market data for netflix uh, it's a tech stock so uh, i've just taken the data so you just go to yahoo finance uh, search netflix or if you want to use any other stock market data for example you want to use google stock price or apple stock price or microsoft you can just search over there and for whatever number of years you want you can simply specify over here and you can get the data from there you can download the data in csv format uh, and other formats as well i've downloaded it in csv format um so we'll use python in order to explore uh, time series data uh, it's very important to perform exploratory data analysis before you uh, build any model um so this will be very useful for people uh, who are interested to work in banks and hedge funds and uh, nbfis where uh, there's a lot of uses of uh, time series analysis um most of the times you will be dealing with uh, price or return data <coughs> so there it will be very handy so what we'll do is we'll first import a couple of important libraries uh, in pandas uh, in in python you need pandas matplotlib seaborn uh, these sort of libraries to perform exploit data analysis you could also use numpy for some of the things pandas just for uh, data purpose in delta filtering data you know you're making changes in the data importing data so all that will be done in pandas we'll use c1 and matplotlib for visualization we'll uh, use some of this um, simple techniques in order to uh, analyze time series data so we'll first uh, import the data so it's i've already downloaded it in uh, and i've kept it in, in a folder um so first i'll define my working directory and then i will uh, import the data using read.csv using pandas i have imported that now what's imp important to mention here is that uh, when you import uh, time series data so that there is a date column and that date column is normally a string but uh, that will be a problem actually if you want to use some of these uh, functions which are uh, specific for time series analysis you need to assign uh, it as a data type of date so make sure you do that um so what how we can do is that while importing using read dot, uh, using read underscore uh, csp just provide this option index underscore column is date so what we'll do is that uh, so you have this uh, uh, date uh, column right um so it will first use it as the index and use this parse underscore dates as true that means uh, this particular uh, column will be considered as a date um all right and then what you do is that uh, we will start we'll see actually what data we have so we just print so we have uh, using a print command we just want to print top uh, rows top five so use head and net so the, the the data frame is netflix so i have used as this as name you can use other names also all right so uh, here we see um and then the first thing i will do is that i will also need to analyze the return data but i do not get the return data directly from yahoo finance so i will calculate that how i do that so return in a very simplistic form you it is nothing but um closing price minus the open price divided by the open price so that's the daily return i am calculating right so in the data you have the open price the high price the low price the closing price and the adjusted close price and you have the volume okay uh, now these are important columns that you need uh, for stock price data we will be dealing mostly with closing price and the return right but in order to calculate return we need to use open price as well so, so right so we calculate the return first it's uh, the difference in the closing price open price divided by the open price so 
what percentage of change we have seen from the opening price of the day to the closing price so that's the daily return okay now when you print you see that you already have the return right and here it is in uh, in absolute terms but you can also express that in percentage term okay so f the first we will do is that what we'll do is that we will plot it we will uh, use line plot to plot the price data I will also plot the return data and you will see actually how they differ uh, you might have heard that recently uh, Netflix uh, sh uh, share has actually uh, dropped quite drastically over 30 percent in the last uh, one week or so it's because Netflix is losing a lot of subscribers uh, for the first time and they exited Russia and because of this you know and all people it's also <coughs> We are coming out of pandemic, so not many people are watching Netflix. So the stock is not doing great. And here you see that actually, right? When you plot it in the last few weeks of 2020, you see that there is a huge decline in the st stock price over 30 uh, percent. The peak was about 650 or so, 650. Now it is somewhere around 200. Um, so that's actually huge. But for the first few months, I would say this peak was somewhere in 2021 and it has been going down for a while and in the last few days, there is a 30% drop. So this is the 30% drop here. And we'll analyze more about it. We have got five years of data, right? So we actually see how it has evolved over time. At some point, it, it was less than 200 and it uh, went uh, all the way up to 650. So uh, it has increased over 300 uh, percenters uh, in the last few years but in the last few months again it is not doing that great the stock price is actually going down and in the last few days it has gone down by over 30 percent okay so that's the price data but in uh, financial world we are more interested in return than the price data um, so we will also try to plot um, return we'll do that later but how can you plot all the uh, all the stock prices whether it's open price close and volume everything at once so use subplots so it's the same syntax except that you use subplots is true and you can mention the uh, size it's optional right and when you do that you have these plots okay line plot for open open price high low closing price adjusted closing price and volume and also return by the way we are now have return even even the return is there but we can also plot return separately and this is how we've done that we already have calculated return so we'll use the plot uh, to ha you know have a line plot and here you see that uh, return is 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 in many ways actually gives you the actual uh, the uh, picture about the growth of the stock uh, so if you would buy a uh, share in the beginning of the trading day and you sell it at the closing day how much money you would make you will some days you will obviously make profits some days you will make loss and that's exactly what you see in a return plot it's a daily return and you see the positives and you see the negatives also um now that's interesting actually you see that whenever there is a positive return it continues and then when there's a negative return it also continues the train continues for a while this is very typical in a time series uh, stock price data uh, where you have positive returns for some days uh, consecutive days and then you have negative return for again set of consecutive days all right so that's how you see it there are some exception right there are some uh, days where you know the stock return has been more than eight percent and there are also some days where the return has been more than uh, the negative return has been more than eight percent that means the drop has been more than eight percent but what i see here is that they're more positive than negatives i would say um, so if you do a daily trading then you are likely to make more money actually than you lose money 
uh, again it depends on the situation how much money you, you invest and how you do that at what point you actually buy and what point you sell all that matters a lot but on in a very simplistic way we can say that uh, for netflix actually the daily returns has been mostly positive and less negative and that's what we see here we can also plot uh, histogram so just use uh, hist function here um and we are plotting here the histogram of the closing price um histogram of stock price is actually a lot of an interesting plot it doesn't tell you much but if when you plot the return it's it's an interesting one here you see that it's a very normal shape right we are now plot so here you see that we have plotted the histogram of the return and it it's in an um normal shape it's not very normal it's somewhat orthotic uh, it's uh, uh, and in theoretical finance also we know that return stock returns follow log normal instead of normal that means the tail is with fat and that's what you also see here right so there's fat tail and for most of the days you will be ending up at somewhere about 0% return right and you have also some uh, fat tails here so that's important to know actually in finance especially if you are a trader you like to know that uh, um and by the way so uh, so how you actually interpret these graphs actually if you are an individual investor and you want to invest in companies so the important thing to know is that if a stock is actually having fat tail it's a bit volatile that means it's a bit risky if you are having high returns high positive returns you could also have high negative returns so it's very volatile so that's risky uh, but in cases where there is no fat tail uh, then it's less volatile and it's less uh, risky in that sense so you like to know the mean and standard deviation of the return so that's important uh, whether the mean and and we have done that for 5 years actually it's not always good to actually look at the 5 years of data you just need to take the last three months of data and then uh, if you want to use that you know trading uh, strategy then use just last few months of data not longer than that you could back test that obviously with longer data your trading strategy but just to have a view of the company you need not just have look at five years of data you could have just maybe a couple of months and maybe maximum one year that should give you a fairly good picture right and then we have plotted the kernel density uh, kernel density is nothing but uh, it's very similar to histogram just that it's bit smooth version uh, so it looks good if you want to write a paper you want to uh, document it provide it to people uh, i think kernel density is it looks better uh, so you could do also kernel density uh, it's the same syntax except that no no we have used plot and that kind of plot we want is kernel density kde just mention that and you will get kernel density plot okay um all right so we can also do block box plot although in my view box plot is not very useful uh, maybe it's somewhat useful for return data uh, right if you do a block plot most of the times it will be somewhere around uh, we like to know the mean and we like to know whether there are outliers something that we already know from the histogram by the way but if you can also use the box plot in order to uh, know that so we'll use the sns which is a seaborn and you have box plot and we have used box plot for the return and you as, as expected the mean is somewhere very close to 0% that means if you uh, buy and sell uh, the next fixed share for each day and with the same amount you will end up making nothing almost nothing uh, after many years so yeah and obviously there are outliers when you will be making a lot of money or you will be losing a lot of money so the fat tail cases that we discussed just before uh, sometimes we need to difference uh, time series so how we can do that so when do you need to differencing differencing is nothing but you know for example yt if a y is yt is stock price then yt minus yt minus 1 is first level differencing okay and that's needed in order to get rid of the trend in the data so 
if you're familiar with uh, time series forecasting such as arima modeling that's a useful technique that we uh, that we use so how you can difference uh, we have this diff diff method so you know I'm, i've used the closing price you could use other things also so we are differencing here okay for the first obviously you will get none because what it does is that it simply takes uh, the difference between uh, the uh, tomorrow minus uh, today okay and for first date obviously you will not get anything and then you have uh, values and after differencing you will see that the pattern does not uh, change much uh, it's it's uh, for the stock it remains more or less the same uh, it looks more like return uh, series rather than the uh, the price series right when you difference so when you see that the stock actually ha has increased because it's it's first difference right that means yes uh, today's price minus yesterday's price okay and you see that many times it has increased but in the last few months in 2020 you see there's a huge drops right you see these bars here long bars this was not very evident in my view in the first plot we see but when you difference actually it is even more clearer okay sometimes we want to resample the data into uh, for example uh, the daily data to weekly data to monthly data or to yearly data quarterly data right so we need to change this frequency of the data and that we can also do that how you can do that using resample okay and here i mentioned w that means i want to make uh, this daily data into weekly data and how we like to do that through mean that means it will just take the mean of the weekly uh, data seven observations and that will be just one observation for that given week okay it could be month also you just have to change it to m for quarter q and so on and so forth okay so if you just read the re, uh, documentation for resample just do a google search you will find what are the abbreviation you can use so that's very useful actually because many times you need to change the frequency of the time series data okay in some cases you also could use also sum but in this case we're more interested in mean than sum um, so this is weekly data so now when you change the frequency uh, from uh, daily to weekly then obviously the number of observations uh, much is much less you know you divide it by seven that many uh, then I put the closing price okay so this is nothing but uh, a moving average for s not moving average but just average of seven days data right when you average out actually the graph is much smoother and that's exactly what uh, you see here also uh, see here right it's smoother actually that uh, right and if you make it uh, monthly also it will be even more smoother All right. Um, all right. So these are some of the things uh, I wanted to talk about. Maybe there are more. Are there more? No. Uh, 